Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a tsunami reel. It's the Evict 3000. It uh, was brought to me locally and the uh, fellow says it's just not running the way it was running before. Could I take it apart and service it, get it going again for the spring season? Well, I can't find the schematic anywhere. I've contacted uh, Bimini Bay Outfitters who owns the brand. They do tell me that there is a service agent uh, but they didn't tell me where to get the schematic. So uh, I'm going to go it alone. And uh, in order to do that, I just started ahead of myself a little bit because I wanted to make sure I don't break anything along the way. The first thing is how to get the handle off. And I noticed that there was a, a button on this side that, well, I wanted to just check underneath that and make sure that there wasn't a, uh, a screw holding the handle. And then there wasn't. So I was able to remove the handle by turning it in a clockwise manner. And then the next thing, this bump guard was in there, and while it didn't give me any obvious look in terms of how that bump guard should come off, I couldn't find a screw. So what I did was, there's only one screw on the body, I uh, just removed that screw, it's a long uh, black screw, and um, then I wanted to see if there was give, and it was, there's a little uh, stud here that fits in the hole on this side, and it's held in place by a screw that goes through the body here. So that opens up three screws, two screws. There's one you don't need to open up to get there, but there's two more screws underneath here that are gonna to need to be removed. Well, we're gonna to continue to remove the exterior parts. I'm taking pictures. I don't have a schematic. This is a reel I haven't worked on before, so I certainly want to take pictures along the way, and I certainly want to hold the, the parts in an accessible place, so I use a, a parts tray to do that uh, because I uh, don't even know where to get the parts from. I guess you can get it from that uh, real servicing agent. I just removed the click ratchet and the spool shim. I'm going to continue by removing the rotor, and this one has a single hold down screw here. It's a Phillips head, and uh, we're all going to learn on this reel because, as I mentioned, I haven't done this one before. So, a relatively new reel, not an inexpensive reel. I think the reel sells upwards of uh, maybe $170 or so. So this is one of the ones where Tsunami is trying to, to go upscale with their production. And um, we'll uh, see if it's uh, what it's made of. So this uh, screw comes off in a reverse thread. It, it's a... Uh, clockwise reverse thread removal and then we should be able to remove the rotor now we are and there's a little uh, bushing that came out that belongs inside the um, shaft of that pinion gear it's just an air rotor kind of a thing it leaves it open it's so it can throw the um, water out and away from the reel always kind of a good idea then we have a shield and an anti-reverse uh, and the like. So let's go underneath to the case now. We know that there's three screws here. We probably have to take the case, this off. I'm thinking that there's one more screw going to be hiding underneath there. But uh, we can get started with this. So this is a 3,000 size wheel. This is appropriate for uh, inshore ocean and uh, deep lakes, piers, freshwater fishing on the higher end, bass fishing maybe. That's what the fellow told me he was going to go for. He's going to take it out and do some more fishing. He said there's nothing wrong with the reel. It just isn't behaving as smoothly as it once did. And I uh, wouldn't mind if I could uh, help him by servicing the reel before his next trip. All right, we're going to take this one off now. And there's one more screw, but I'm thinking this metal shield here has to be removed as well. Always interesting what you're going to find in these reels. It says it's a uh, stainless gear inside. It's got an S drive. I'm not quite sure what that S drive means. And I'm noticing that all these screws are different. I've kind of warned about that before, but we have a small screw with a rough thread below. We have a small screw with a fine thread for this hole. We have the screw up here, which belongs on the left side. And then we have that screw, which I believe is a matching screw. 
yeah, the two are the same for the top two, and that screw is going to be the one that's going to hold that little bump card in place. I'm going to take those and put those into my parts tray. I've got it filmed, so I know where they go if I get a, a question mark. And I'm thinking i got to take this off now. There's probably something else hiding in here. So there's two screws that are holding this outer cap on. These are always an adventure when you do them for the first time. Kind of what uh, makes it fun from time to time and makes it harrowing from time to time. I think the one that we're most concerned about is that uh, we don't snap a bump guard or something because there's a hidden trait there. Okay, these two small ones I'm going to put in a separate corner of my box. That should allow me to lift this up. That's the guard. Now I just want to check, yep, there's just as I thought, there's at least one more screw that's holding all of this on. This is interesting. It has an anti-reverse override, but the, from what I can tell, the little lever that would be the anti-reverse override is sealed off. So my guess is that uh, even though it would have that feature on some, it's not on this reel. All right, let's take the screw out of here and that should allow me to open up the case and see what's going on underneath. I think we got that now. So Bimini Bay Outfitters is the one that owns Tsunami. And I believe that screw is going to be the same as the other. Yeah. So there's three screws that are the same. This one, this one, and this one. So when you go to re reinstall these, it doesn't really matter. We should be able to get this case off now. In the meantime, we've just jumped the spring here. That spring is going to go around the corner of this and on the post there. It's a good thing that it just kind of fell off because it would probably be a heck of a thing to try and figure out where it went later. All right, let's see if we can get this off now. We can. The bearing just came out of the side plate. The bearing shield came out of the side plate. And they belong on the uh, main gear. I'm just going to put that one shield back on the main gear. I'm going to put the other bearing in here. These are sealed bearings. You don't need to do anything with those. I'm going to walk this down now. There should be a screw. And I'm not sure if the main gear is going to come out by itself. This is a good time to take the side plate off there, screw. It's also a good time to tell you if you like these kinds of videos, then please subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, uh, hit that notification bar. That'll be the best way to find out uh, when I post my videos and whether you want to watch them or not. Okay, well I can see that the issue here is really that it's a lot of dried grease. He's right, it's time for a tune-up. And I'm not seeing whether this, this can come out by itself. Good. I was just looking and thinking, all right, that's going to be a little bit of a problem trying to get that out, but this does pull out directly. And we're going to just take a cotton swab here we're going to mop up the old grease, and this certainly is older dried grease. So we'll get all of that off. There's some grease in the channel there, so I'm going to just take a hard brush. You can use a toothbrush, or in this case, I think this brush came from Home Depot. It's just a multi-use hard brush. Sometimes you'll find them in wire. I don't like the wire for cleaning out the grease. And you'll notice as I pull it out, I do make sure that it lands on the paper towel. So when I go back to the next section, I have a clean brush to, to go and do that. All right, all of that cleaned up nicely. Check the back teeth. Make sure that all of the gears are, or the teeth of the gear are there. Same thing here. Make sure they're uniform. Make sure that they're not chipped or cracked, that they have a consistent pattern. And also check it this way with the ridges. Make sure that there's no high or low ridges in those uh, on that main gear. I'm going to set that aside for a moment. Then I can take out the axle shaft. To do that, I'm going to remove the 
screw that's holding that in place. And these parts get small, so be careful as you're working them. Hold the axle shaft's cross wind block and then pull up to remove the, the main post. And this one's a little bit of dried grease on it, like everything else does. And so a lot of the, the work on these reels is all about the cleaning, the inspection, and the installation again. All right, this should just fold over to the side here. We have a crosswind block that is, or crosswind gear that is held in by a screw. We'll take that out next. That is also a Phillips head screw. So if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the, the company or the history or, or any of those kinds of things, leave it in the, uh, the comments section. It doesn't have to be about this reel. Maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck. Maybe you just can't figure it out as to why there's an issue that you're having. Uh, well, in that case, just uh, leave it in the comment section and I will be happy to uh, answer the question if I know the answer. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try and point you to where you can get the answer. And if anybody knows the answer to where you can get the schematics for this reel, well, send that in too. I'd be happy to try and understand a little bit more about it. All right, I'm just going to clean this up. I'm not disrupting this crosswind block, but it, it, I'm sure it just lifts right out here, but I'm just kind of leaving that to the side for a moment. We have the screw for that, this, the axle shaft. Now all that's left then is this top assembly, and we know we already removed that spring from this piece, so I guess we don't have to worry too much about the spring popping. It kind of removed itself. And these little screws are pretty tight in here. See what we can do. This is a good place to tell you, take the pictures. I, I'm doing the pictures by video, but boy, there's enough opportunities to forget all the pieces and parts in this reel. So I would encourage you to take pictures. Use your digital camera, use a cell phone, use whatever you like, but don't miss the opportunity at critical junctions to, uh, to take those pictures. Well, I've switched over to a micro screwdriver because the, the head on these screws is particularly small. And we're just working that out now. Sometimes folks ask me what tools I'm using. These are just uh, basic uh, Harbor Freight kind of screwdrivers. I think I bought the set maybe for $10, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure. And again, I'm just going to lay this on the side. Now this is getting dangerous here. I'll just forewarn you about that. If you do uh, find yourself laying the parts here rather than in the parts tray, then by all means, please be careful with that uh, paper towel because, well, like the ma magicians who used to show you how to pull a tablecloth out and leave all the tablecloth pieces, uh, all the china on that cloth, it doesn't always work out that way. And from time to time, the breaking are all over the floor and you, you certainly don't want to go all over the floor with these. All right, the three of those screws. Take a note where this is. This is hard to mess this collar up because there is a, a tag right here, a little stud that's extra. But always pay attention to where that's coming from. Now we can lift off the hold down. In the meantime, I guess a little button came out there. That's fine. And uh, we should be able to remove this assembly now. So there's your assembly. It has a pinion gear, a bearing, a uh, anti-reverse that's held in the case, and another bearing and collar up top. Now again, these bearings don't need service because they're sealed. That bearing and collar will come off. This is a free-floating one. This is your instant anti-reverse override. And I'm going to leave this intact because I'm noticing that the bearings are open bearings here. So all you want to do is um, just Make sure that it's all clean, and uh, this one's functioning, so we're just going to leave it as it is, the old sleeping dog lies. But if you pull this collar up, the inside of this is the open 
anti-reverse spurring. And unless that anti-reverse spurring is not working, uh, then you can use your judgment as to whether you want to kind of play around with it or not. So I don't know why they didn't use a, a sealed anti-reverse clutch, but they chose not to. All right, this is just going to get reinstalled. I've I've checked it. It's cleaned. We've put that uh, grease on the bottom of the shaft. This slide bar goes inside. You need to find the slot where that anti-reverse housing goes. You need to make sure that the plastic is in the opening. And you can give it a test again. Just kind of run it, pull it back, make sure that the anti-reverse is holding. And it is. Okay. I'm going to put the bearing back on again, sealed bearings, so you don't don't need to do anything with the sealed bearing. Okay, I kind of fooled myself with that. I said there was a stud there. There wasn't a stud. But I did properly uh, align this. I'm going to start these by hand. So I just got a tsunami in that uh, it's a shield that the fellow just gave up on. He said that um, he paid a lot of money for it. He's had it in the shop a couple of times. The uh, reel continues to skip and he's done. So I haven't had a chance to go back and take a look and tell me I could have it when it's done because he's done with it. And uh, it's a shame when you lose confidence in a reel. And, uh, this out of warranty. I told him he should send it back if it's been a continuing problem. He just wants nothing to do with them. He's going back to his Shimano reels. And I guess that's that. So it's kind of a shame, but it happens. All right, this is the third of the screws. That'll hold that whole assembly down. We'll just go back, clean up the other stuff, and reassemble. I do wear a glove on my hand. Sometimes it gets in the way, but uh, I just prefer to keep the majority of the old dirt and grease out of contact with my skin if I can. And uh, just some days you wonder why you do it, right? All right, we're going to test the anti-reverse. And we're in pretty good condition there. Okay, that's, uh, that's all working. Let's go ahead and put the pieces back together then. These have been wiped clean. This one is a Teflon one, doesn't need the grease. But we'll grab it, we'll put a little bit on the bottom. That just goes over the stud. I'm not sure what the design means on the S drive. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease onto the cross wing gear. Lay that cross one gear down. Make sure that it messes with the transition gear there. Grease the slot on your cross one block. Make sure that that block seats into the two cavities here. There's a place for both. Then it just slides over the stud on that. Then we can grab our axle shaft. Relatively uncomplicated in terms of service. The axle shaft goes in. There's a little grommet, I think I mentioned that earlier, that came out in this play. That's going to go over the axle shaft and seat into the pinion gear. It seats right in there. Yep, got ahead of myself there, didn't I? Many of these cross wind gears just kind of lay on the stud. This one belongs with the, uh, uh, with the screw tie down. So I right, take that out and put the screw tie down in place again. 
stainless gears, we've seen one, two, three, four ball bearings. We've seen an anti-reverse clutch. Imagine if it claims more ball bearings there in the handle and places like this line, ro line roller on the spool and the like. All right, there we go. Now we're back in with that. Let's put a little bit of grease on the front surface where the cross wine block is going to ride. We've already put some in the channel of the cross wine block. Go ahead and lay that in place. And like a swinging door now, just swing it over. Now we can come down with the axle shaft. And this should be the last piece on this paper towel here. I should be able to go back to my box and get those. So you need a, just a few, few tools to make this one work. And we can get the main gear. Just get that all greased up there. We've already greased the pinion gear. The main gear can just get set. Now, this is going to touch two gears now. It's going to touch that small gear and it's going to touch the crosswind gear. So you need to work it. And then you want to make sure everything goes before you, you get very far down the path here. So turn the reel. Make sure that it's operating properly. And it is. So we can close this case up then. To close the case up, we're going to take the case. Again, it's got a sealed bearing, so there's nothing really going on there. And this one should just snap in place, which it did. We said that there were three identical screws. It could go in either hole. So I'm just going to set them in before I go too much further here. And then we said there were two different screws below, and if you're paying attention, the rough threaded small one goes on the left, and the thin one that's got the fine threads go on the right. Well, I'm running short on my recording time here, so I'm going to just stop this for a moment, and we'll be right back. Okay, well, let's keep going then. We have that uh, anti-reverse spring. This is interesting. It's a push spring rather than a pull spring. I kind of like like that. We have one that's going to hook over the terminal. The other one's got an open end to it. I don't know if it's easy to see or not. Got an open end, no hook, but it's got a, um, a corresponding little insert here, which I'm kind of sure is where that's going to go. Remember, it jumped off of here, so it should load like that. Got to be careful here. I don't want to shoot this spring far. Don't want to shoot it at all. So there you go. It's actually pushing that assembly out. And then as you're turning, we'll do this again easily. Turning should be fine. And as soon as you go to back pedal, it's holding that uh, that assembly in place. Cool. All right. Just learned something there. That's an unusual design. All right, just again, if you've lost your spring, it actually sits over the extended arm of this, uh, I'm trying to do this, over the extended arm of the carrier, and the hook side belongs there. Now we can take that post piece, just trying to find the orientation to it. That's why that's not happening. I'm trying to put the orientation down and I have the screw extended. So we'll do this again. I just want to cover it up while that spring is there without going any further. Now we should be able to put that on just like that. We have those two screws next. And I'm going to my parts tray for that. 
This is where we actually took the micro screwdriver out. And interestingly enough, this micro screwdriver is kind of done the work all around. Okay, so that one's in place. One more of those small ones. And those of you that watch these videos know me and these small ones oftentimes, well, let's just say we have a play date and have some fun. Okay, the screw underneath is tight, but the rest of the assemblies still needs to be worked. This one I'm leaving out now. Remember, it goes here, but with due reason, because I have to put that pump guard in before I can install that. The fine threaded one goes to the right, and the coarse threaded one goes to the left. And what were we saying about the small, small screws, right? There you go. I'll lay that down. All right, well, so what's the recap? We've we've kind of walked our way through the reel. We did notice it's nice quality. Again, this one's selling for about $170, so you would expect to find quality like that. The uh, gearing is stainless. That's a, a plus. We found that uh, you kind of have to use your intuition a little bit on this. I suspect that if these become very popular, that I will get a few reel in a bag ones because uh, there are times where it's just not obvious. But uh, short of that, it seems to, to be a nicely made reel. We'll see if it stands up or if it's going to be one of these where uh, the owner just kind of doesn't, doesn't find that it's doing what it should be doing there. Uh, I'm just kind of looking to make sure I have this angled properly. There we go, it's snapped in. There's a stud here that holds there, and I'm noticing that I'm clear where the screw goes in on this side. So that can go back on now. There's always, I guess, aesthetic values in these things, and a lot of folks do, well, they, they design these things to hide the screws or whatever it is. At the end of the day, it really hasn't changed much in that time. All right, the, uh, I, I was just checking to see if we have a manual or a, uh, a mechanical bail. We have a mechanical. There's a little trip lever that works there. I'm going to just put some oil onto the seams where the trip lever is. You do not need to take the bails off and mess with the spring assemblies or anything unless it's broken. Okay, now we can put our rotor back on. The reel does appear to be a sealed reel, or at least a good, good amount of it does. We have our rotor nut now with a little seal on top of that. Remember it came off in a clockwise manner, reverse thread, so it's going back on in a counterclockwise manner, which is not the normal way to come back on. Now we should have a screw tie down that goes here. That'll hold that nut from vibrating free. And I know I use the term vibrating, but a lot of these reels go out on boats and the engine noise and the vibration on the deck can shake parts free. Give it a spin. It's doing nicely. I guess we can put the caps back on. Silly me, I'm going to have to go back to my um, start of this. I don't remember what side drive the handle was on. We'll get that corrected. That's another reason why. Of course, if you're working on your own reel, it's pretty much easy enough. 
But when you're working on others, you should note what side the, the handle came off. All right, I'm going to take the drag assembly off. This is pretty much a straightforward drag. Underneath we have the little click tongue, which is going to make the noise when the, the drag is in, uh, going out. And on this side, we have one of these clips that rides in a groove. And we'll see what kind of washers are underneath. I'm suspecting if it's a high-end wheel, it should be Carbon-Tex Carbon washers. But, yep, that's what we have. We have a series of Carbon-Tex washers. We have a clean channel there, so that's not a problem. This looks like a straight six set. Three metals. Three um, fabrics or carbon tax. I'm just going to make sure that we get the grease out of the channel. And then in a traditional six set, these are carbon tax. You don't need to do anything with carbon tax. It's optional whether you want to put a light coat of grease on there, but uh, you don't have to. So the, the round one called the keyed washer because it's got a rectangular center goes first. Second one is a eared washer. It has two points on it. They fit in the slots in the spool. Last one, the carbon tex, and then again a keyed washer. So the keyed washers hold to the shaft. The eared washer holds to the spool. And when you tighten them down and compress them, you're basically locking the shaft to the spool. And that's how the drags work. All right, we've got the spring clip back in. I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, piece on it. Silly me, it says carbon drags. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Tighten this down. For now, we're going to put the handle on the left side drive. If it needs to change over, we will change it over. And that's it. That's your Tsunami Evict 3000. Pretty, pretty nice, pretty smooth reel. And uh, this one is ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Again, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit that notification button as that will enable you to see when I am posting my videos. To everybody who's a first responder, essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.